On today's episode, NASA is building a helicopter to search for alien life, China makes a deal with the US to share the moon, and the Space Force continues development of their next-gen missile defense system. NASA has approved funding for the construction of a helicopter drone that will seek out new life on one of the most fascinating locations in our solar system. Titan is the largest moon that orbits Saturn. It's also the second biggest moon in our entire solar system, about 50% larger than our own moon. But while the moon we know is nothing more than a gray lifeless rock, Titan has the potential to be so much more than we can even imagine. It's the only moon in the solar system with an atmosphere, and this is a thick atmosphere, four times the density of Earth's. This creates a reverse greenhouse effect, blocking out what little heat from the sun can reach this far out into the solar system. The temperature is so cold that water ice freezes hard as stone and forms into mountains and canyons. Methane gas liquefies in the atmosphere and falls like rain onto the surface, creating rivers and lakes of rocket fuel, making it the only known world aside from the Earth that still has an active hydrological cycle and stable liquid on its surface. Also like the Earth, Titan has a variety of environments. In addition to the rocky seashores, there are vast deserts across the moon's equator with long dunes formed by blowing wind. Only this is not sand, it's a granular organic material that's also fallen from the sky and settled on top of frozen ice rock. We have no solid answer as to what this material is or where it comes from or if it could potentially support some signs of life given the right circumstances. And among all of this, there is also water on Titan. Liquid water trapped beneath the frozen surface in a vast ocean, and occasionally, water will erupt out onto the surface like slushy lava from a cryovolcano. Scientists have proven that this moon contains all of the most important building blocks for life as we know it, and there's even potential for something to be alive that is far beyond anything we do know. This is why NASA is sending their car-sized octocopter drone known as Dragonfly to search the planet and collect samples of the frozen hydrocarbon soil, which could include vital clues. While we can observe the moon using powerful telescopes such as the Hubble telescope and the James Webb, the thick cloud layer that surrounds the moon makes it impossible to study the surface from a distance. So of course, the only way to know for sure what's actually going on out there is to land on the moon and investigate for ourselves. Dragonfly can give insights into this as it is designed with two sampling drills attached to each side of its landing gear. They are equipped with vacuum cleaner like hoses, which will send the samples inside the craft to be broken up and tested by different instruments. This along with its ability to travel the moon without worrying about rough terrain makes it the perfect probe for Titan's many deserts and mountains. The biggest issue with the mission so far has been the budget cuts and timeline setbacks it has faced in recent years. The program has been on the books for almost six years after its conception in 2019. The mission was originally slated for a 2027 launch, but that plan quickly became unfeasible. After nearly five years, the mission was finally confirmed in 2024, which meant teams were able to officially begin designing the craft and laying out the mission plan. Now, the program has passed one of its final hurdles. On April 24th, the mission plan was approved by NASA administration, and the team behind Dragonfly can now begin construction of the eight-rotor vehicle. Space agencies spend billions encrypting their communications so they don't get hacked. Meanwhile, you're out here connecting to public Wi-Fi at the airport like it's not a digital minefield. Bold move. If you don't want hackers snooping through your data like the NSA at a UFO convention, you need NordVPN. Their Threat Protection Pro blocks malware, phishing attempts, and scam sites before they can wreck your day. Basically, it's like putting a force field around your internet connection, except it actually works. And don't worry, NordVPN won't slow you down. It's the fastest VPN on the market, so you can stream, browse, and download at warp speed without buffering like you're on dial-up in 1997. They even have a dark web monitor, which lets you know if your passwords have been leaked, because nothing says fun weekend project like changing every password you've ever used. Look, NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you somehow don't love having actual internet privacy, you can just get your money back, no questions asked. So click the link in the description, get an exclusive deal, and stop rolling the dice with your data. 
Once the vehicle finally comes together, it will be launched inside a large heat shield atop a Falcon Heavy rocket. The trip will take approximately six years, and when Dragonfly arrives at Titan, it's going to enter the atmosphere on a direct ballistic trajectory. The heat shield will protect the drone from the dense atmosphere of the moon until it's slowed down enough to deploy a parachute. After floating down to a low altitude, Dragonfly will detach and power up its eight electric motors to take flight. When it lands, it will mark the first time we've sent anything to Titan in almost 30 years. The only other mission to land on the surface was a probe that lasted less than two hours before losing power, but it did return these images as it descended through the cloud layer and onto the surface. Dragonfly, on the other hand, will use a state-of-the-art radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which uses the slow decay of plutonium to generate electricity. The probe is expected to last about two and a half years and will be only the second helicopter placed on another celestial body after its cousin, the Ingenuity helicopter on Mars. NASA is now able to leverage everything they learn from almost three years of flying Ingenuity on Mars and pour that knowledge into building Dragonfly. So when will this mission launch now? Well, with its approval, we were given a pretty good idea of its timeline. The mission will launch no earlier than July of 2028, and if that launch window holds, then Dragonfly is expected to arrive at Titan in 2034. While progress on Dragonfly is certainly something to keep an eye on over the next couple of years, it's not the only robotic exploration that is planned to launch in 2028. China is gearing up for its next few moon missions with their Chang'e 7 and 8 lunar landers the latter of which will be one of China's first truly international operations. In 2023, they opened up over 200 kilograms of payload on board their landers to international partners, and we finally know which 11 countries have been selected to go to the moon. Since the Chang'e program's inception in 2004, it's featured some very significant achievements, such as making China the third nation to land on the moon with Chang'e 3, it's also allowed China to return their first lunar samples on the Chang'e 5 mission, and now China has a chance to make even more history by opening their space programs to even more countries, which is something new for their space program, even though international cooperation has long been a typical standard in the spaceflight industry. They have awarded 11 different countries, as well as one international association, the chance to include 10 experiments aboard Chang'e 8's robotic lunar lander. Most are small experiments or micro rovers, which will help fuel the respective country's scientific goals. Of these, some of the most interesting include a brand new Pakistani rover developed by the Space and Upper Atmosphere Research Commission of Pakistan. Very little info on this rover is out yet, but it's expected to be a lightweight micro rover that can explore the terrain around the lander. A joint effort of Middle Eastern countries led by the Middle East Technical University of Turkey has contributed two small intelligent exploration robots for challenging environments, which will search the area around the landing site, climbing terrain that normal micro rovers would be unable to traverse. The Iranian Space Agency will also be contributing with their Lunar Potential Monitor experiment. This acts as a combination of many smaller devices, which will measure important metrics about what kind of future mission the moon will be able to host. It can monitor moonquakes, lunar dust storms, and potential meteorite impacts. These are just three of the 10 payloads with other countries having science experiments or rovers as well. This makes it the most international mission China has ever attempted, and the decision to include international payloads on this mission shows the Chinese Space Agency's newfound dedication to partnership. They also demonstrated this willingness after China announced plans to share some of their collected moon samples from the previous Chang'e 5 mission with universities of other nations, two of which are in the United States. The growing tensions between the US and China made the announcement surprising, especially since the two universities, Brown University and Stony Brook University, both receive significant NASA funding. This week, the private defense company known as L3 Harris pulled ahead in the race to build up one of America's largest defense projects in recent years, known as the Golden Dome. Golden Dome is an advanced satellite architecture designed to detect and destroy any high-altitude missile threats to the United States. The project proposed by the Trump administration would include numerous ground tracking stations as well as space satellite tracking systems. This program may soon receive a much-needed budget increase as fear of conflicts with China and Russia remain on the rise. 
This would come in the form of a $150 billion increase to the defense budget proposed by the Armed Services Committee, with about $25 billion being reserved specifically for the Golden Dome. L3 Harris would receive a portion of this spending if they win the competition for a defense contract. The contract involves developing an advanced relay of satellites to detect and track incoming missiles of hypersonic weapons. L3 has taken a significant step to winning the contract with their hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor prototype during a test in February. The test involved two satellites going head-to-head, -head, one being L3's and the other being a similar satellite designed by Northrop Grumman. A United States defense spokesperson stated, while a full assessment of proven payload performance has not yet been concluded, MDA can confirm that the L3 Harris satellite is successfully demonstrating its primary functions. They also stated that, quote, the Northrop Grumman satellite failed to meet established requirements. The goal for these satellites is to detect fast maneuvering hypersonic missiles or hypersonic glide vehicles. This falls under the same hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor layer, which was activated during the first term of President Trump. The technology is actually very important, as hypersonic glide vehicles can maneuver in real time, which makes them incredibly difficult to track with ground stations. Using the test prototypes, it was clearly determined that the L3 satellite outperformed the Northrop developed one, which gives them huge credibility already. It also shows that the size of the company doesn't always matter when it comes to quality, as Northrop was given over $150 million just to develop the prototype, while L3 was given significantly less at $121 million.